What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to stitch together photos by hand using Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at burnwills. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. So if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So today what we're going to be talking about is how to stitch together photos by hand here in Photoshop. A lot of people I know that when they make their panoramas and things like that, they are here in Lightroom and then they'll select their photos like, like this. They'll group select, right click, and then just go photo merge, panorama, and then allow Lightroom to do all the work. But in this scenario, I was just down at Lions Bay and I have a series of images here that I took to combine into a panorama that would be combined with these cliff jumpers here. Now a lot of people I know seem to avoid trying to stitch photos together by themselves just because it seems like this super hard and intimidating process. So through this tutorial I'm hoping to sort of make it a little bit more friendly Hopefully it will inspire you to shoot something a little bit more unique and out of your comfort zone by being able to stitch these photos together yourself. So the first thing that I did is of when I was in Lightroom here where all my photos are, are imported, I just selected all the photos that I wanted to include into my panorama. So I just clicked on my cliff jumper here and then I went over and I just held command and clicked on the preceding photos that I wanted to include in my panorama. Then once they were all selected, I just right clicked and then went to edit in and then Adobe Photoshop 2017. So when you do that, it will open up all your images in here in Photoshop, all in separate tabs like this. So how I start is I'm going to use my cliff jumper as my anchor image. So this is going to be on my far right side of my panorama. So the first thing that I'm going to do is sort of just enlarge my canvas. So I'm going to press C for my crop tool. And I'm just going to stretch out my canvas out this way and also bring it up just a little bit like that. This is sort of my guess of where all the photos are going to fit in and then we'll do a final crop after we've put everything together. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rename my layer zero to cliff jumper. So then once all the layers are put together here, I won't get all confused. The next photo that I want to include is the treetops here. So I'm going to go and find that which is this photo here. So I'm just going to press V for my move tool and I'm just going to click and drag into my cliff jumper thing here. One way that I've seen a lot of people try to do it is they just bring down their opacity of their one photo, drag it over the other, and then sort of try to match it up that way. What I find difficult about doing that, when I zoom in, you'll notice that it's, it's sort of hard to tell what's what and it, it's difficult to make everything match really well, in, in my opinion. So the trick that I like to use is I leave my opacity in my fill at 100%, but I'll change my layer blending mode down to difference. Basically what it's doing is showing the differences between our top layer and our underlying layer. And so what our goal is, is that we want to try to see, find our edges and make those edges line up as best we can. That way the photos blend perfectly together. So of course lenses do have some sort of distortion sometimes, so you might have to enlarge and adjust accordingly to make everything fit. So I can use my mountains as a reference point and then sort of, I can see where it all matches up so I can see that these two branches need to match. And so I can just sort of go up and piece that branch together as best I can. So that looks almost perfect right there. So now I can just change this to back to normal. So now when I zoom out I'm just going to drag this behind my cliff jumper layer and you'll see that it does match up pretty well. So you'll see that the branch sort of comes out here and goes into the next photo and so on and so forth. So what you can do now is of course we don't want to have this harsh edge here so on my cliff jumper layer which is my top image I'm just going to make a layer mask, get my brush tool make sure black is selected and I'm just going to use a nice soft brush with a probably a low flow so let's say about 84-85% and I'm just going to paint out that harsh edge just like this and I'm just going to go down the sides as well and I might even include these mountains just to make everything match a little better. 
so you you might also want to experiment with your brush hardness so I'm just making my brush a little bit harder so I can make everything look a little bit more exact here so then once you think that you have it just zoom in and double check that there's nothing weird going on like right here you'll see there's sort of some weird stuff happening but you again just go over with your brush and you can mask all that stuff out and then you'll notice this rope swing here is sort of weird but I will fix that after once we put all of the images together and then we can adjust the crop and whatever else we need to do cool so now as you'll see just zooming in you pretty much can't tell where the seam is so if I zoom out and turn this top layer on and off you can see that we just blended them together and you can't even tell so now this is one strip of our photo and we have three more strips to create so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna select both of these layers press command G to group them and I'm just gonna call this strip one so now so this will be strip one and then we'll have strip two down here strip three and strip four so next thing that we want to do is we want to find our image that can fit right in here so I'm gonna just go through my opened images and it looks like it's this one here so again I'm just gonna grab my move tool click and drag it into here and I am going to set my layer mode down to difference and I'm going to match these up as best I can in this case our tree isn't super important because we're gonna be using our strip one tree here so now what we want is we want this island to extend out here so we want to make sure that our coast is nice and level so that's what we're wanting to blend up together so in this case I want the mountains to match up as best as it can so I'm just going to adjust the angle of them and such and such adjust the size a little just to try to make it make the coast blend in with itself again you're trying to do this as best you can sometimes you'll have a hard time getting it absolutely perfect that's why the layer mask is super helpful because then you can sort of you can do any fine adjustments afterwards with your layer mask so this looks about good to me so I'm just gonna click my checkbox and I'm gonna change my layer mode back to normal so I can see my photo and you'll see that it's over top of our other images here which is okay so I'm just gonna add a layer mask to this layer and I'm going to just mask out pretty much everywhere that isn't the coast so I'm gonna so I'm just gonna mask out the bit a little bit of the sky here a bit parts of the trees and then of course I want my cliff jumper to be in the photo still we don't want to get rid of him So once you think that you have it, just again, just zoom in and double check, look around that there's no uh, ghosting around your mountains or on the coast or things like that. And then you're pretty much good to go. So I noticed that those trees are looking a little bit funky here. So I'm just going to touch those up a little better. Oh. So now everything looks like it's blended together as one. So now our next objective is to get this bottom water here so now I'm going to go through my images and this would be the next photo drag and drop and again I'm just going to set it to difference and I'm just going to try to line up the islands as best as I can in this case it's just filling in the water so it's not as big of a deal if it's totally lined up but you, it's still good practice to do it as best as you can regardless so that looks about good to me right about here and so I'm just going to click my checkbox again change my blending mode back to normal add a layer mask and I'm, for this case I add a layer mask and then I'm just going to mask out pretty much everywhere except for the last little bit of water down filling in our bottom part here so of course you want to make sure your cliff jumper is still there and 
Yes, there we go. We have now completed our second strip. So I'm just going to select these two layers and I'm going to press Command G and I'm just going to rename this to Strip 2. Now looking back when I, I missed a little bit on the mountain here and it's from my layer 3 which is the bottom bit of water. You can see the change up here. If you're ever unsure if you maybe didn't paint over a certain area with black which is 100% invisible, you can alt, hold alt and click on your layer mask and this is pretty much what your layer mask looks like. So as you see this would be where the mountains are and I totally missed a big chunk there. So I can just mask that out, paint black on there and I'm just going to continue to paint black all on the sky and things like that. So now there is absolutely no overlay at all. So now when I alt, hold alt and click again, everything comes out nice and clean and my layer three only affects where I want it to. From here on out, it's sort of just rinse and repeat, bring your image in, change the blending mode to difference, match it up, add a layer mask, mask out the areas that you don't need to see anymore, and so on and so forth until you've blended all your images. Now as you can see we have completed our entire panorama blending in eight images in four stri separate strips all by hand. So the next thing that you want to do of course is make everything balance out. So I'm just going to quickly group these two layers, these last two layers, name them to strip four. And now I'm just going to grab my crop tool by pressing C and I'm just going to drag into my image like this. Next, I want my horizon, see how, see how crooked this is? I want my horizon to be level. So I'm just going to rotate my image till my horizon looks level. There we go. It looks about right there. So I'm just going to click OK. And there we go. So the last thing that I want to do is since I shot this jump in a series of photos, so I had my camera set on burst mode, I want to include every frame of the jumper as he goes down. There will be sort of multiple versions of him. So now going back to Lightroom, where I have all my photos stored, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to find the series of images. Now I'm just again, just like before, I'm just going to right click and go edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. I'm just, so I'm just going to start with the image where he's at the highest point of the cliff. So I'm just, just like before, I'm going to grab my move tool and click and drag into my composition. So this might seem a little bit overwhelming now that there's like so much real estate, but just it's just like a puzzle sort of match the area to where it might belong. So in this case, I want to match to this cliff. So just like before, I'm going to change my blending mode down to difference. So I can just get the general area of where it should line up. Now, just like before, I'm just going to name this quickly to jump one. So now I know, then we'll go up sequentially from there. And so I'm, again, I'm just going to add my layer mask. In this case, since I only want such a small area to save myself the work, once I add myself, once I add a layer mask, I'm just going to press Command I to invert that layer mask, and then now I can just paint white onto the area. And now with a relatively hard brush, I'm just going to paint in the area with white, so it all blends together nicely. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the second version of him. So that's going to be this one right here. And I'm just going to grab my move tool, click and drag into my composition. Again, set my blending mode down to difference and line it up to the best of my abilities. So that looks pretty good right there. As you can see, there's, so, there's a bunch of black, so that means a lot of things are lining up well. So this time I'm just going to hold alt and click my layer mask icon so it creates a black layer mask right out of the gate for us and now I'm just going to paint now I'm just going to paint white with my brush tool in the area of the jumper and it will add him in in just the area that we want. So just make sure to zoom in and double check that there's no weird stuff going on with the branches and things like that. So in this so actually I just decided that I only I want this to start with him jumping here. So I'm just going to delete my jump one layer and I'm just going to rename this one to jump one. And this will be my starting position right here. So how I added those first two images of the jumper is sort of pretty much what you do for the rest of the images or the rest of the series of images you have is just rinse and repeat over and over and over until all of the images are blended into your photo. 
Anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial, and I hope you learned something and now you're pro at stitching photos together in Photoshop. If this tutorial helped you, I would love if you hit that like button and maybe even consider subscribing. I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. If you want to catch me on Instagram, make sure to find me at Burnwills, or if you want to check out more of my work, make sure to visit my website at outboundmedia.net. This was how to stitch photos together in Photoshop. Again, my name's Brendan from Outbound Media, and I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.